today's kind of a sad day, if I'm being honest. It's being it's a little bit of a sad day, if I'm being honest. That has everything to do with the fact that Disney is already going into 20th Century Fox and 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 making making them cuts. They snip, 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 snip. They're they're getting rid of stuff as we knew they would. Remember, the original estimate for jobs lost at Fox after the acquisition, 4,000 was the original. By the time the acquisition was getting ready to be finalized, I heard it could go anywhere from 4K to 10K. 10,000 people potentially at a high-end estimate could lose their jobs. And that is just wild in my opinion. But today, Disney is retiring the Fox 2000 label. Now, the thing you need to know about Fox 2000 is that these guys are kind of like like the indie darlings, you know, like Fox Searchlight, Fox 2000, like they they played in those kind of smaller budgeted or mid budget range films that focused on a lot of different types of content. In fact, you might have seen there that there was The Fault in Our Stars, that movie that did wonderful at the box office uh, based upon its initial release. But it says here, Disney will stop making films under the Fox 2000 label, a mean that could, a move that could mean its uh, head, Elizabeth Gabler, would not be making the move to the Magic Kingdom. Variety has learned uh, that the decision is surprising because Disney had previously stated that Gabler would stay on board at the studio even after it was acquired. The announcement seemed uh, to uh, they seemed to suggest good things for Fox 2000. Disney is committed to completing the Fox 2000 films uh, currently in production. It is unclear what this means for Gabler and her team going forward. No one at Fox 2000 uh, was laid off on Tuesday uh, or on Thursday, but they were informed of the decision. Um, and the thing is here, look at this. It goes it goes on to say, and this is interesting. Uh, Fox 2000 remains uh, releases remain part of the Fox Film Library and catalog meaning they could appear on streaming services that Disney is launching. Fox 2000 has produced such box office hits as The Fault in Our Stars, Life of Pi, Diary of a Wimpy Kid. Uh, Gabler is widely admired for her talent in picking literary properties to turn into films. And that's the thing. That's the thing. They've done a good job at that. Like, I, the Diary of a Wimpy Kid movies, look, the first couple of them were really solid. I'm not going to lie. Like, I really enjoyed the first couple of those films. When they rebooted it with Alicia Silverstone, my undying love of Alicia Silverstone still couldn't save that movie. But Life of Pi, like one best visual effects, it was up for all these awards, all these accolades. Ain Lee was, you know, really well like love for it. And then you had like The Fallen Our Stars, as I said, it, it came out of nowhere, kind of. They just kind of dropped it and it made like 73 million in its opening weekend because of how many young adults loved that story uh, of, of Hazel Grace. In fact, my, my daughter's middle name is Grace. And I think it's because of that movie I, that after seeing that and crying her eyes out, my girlfriend's like, I love the name Hazel. Even now with our second kid, she's like still trying to work Hazel in there somewhere. So these movies have impact, direct impact on my life at least. But the thing is, they are, these people are going to lose their jobs, right? They, they are going to lose their jobs. Once it's all done, they're, they're, they're going to close down the Fox 2000 label. You, you know, they're not going to, they're not going to. Uh, integrate everybody into Disney. They're going to definitely keep Gabler. If she's produced these many hits for Fox and she's really good, has a keen eye at finding young adult talent, uh, young adult novels and turning them into cash, it will be the exact opposite of a wrinkle in time, which ultimately outside of solo was Disney's number one black eye in 2018. I mean, the movie was meant to be this big, 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 you know, young adult uh, adaptation. And it just kind of came in, you know, blah, 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 blah. You know, and now uh, Ava DuVernay is working over at DC on the, uh, what is it, on the New Gods or whatever the hell it's called? I don't even know. I don't I don't see why they even go down that path, Kim, and where things are now with what they're doing. But I'm going to be curious to see what, what happens with this because, look, adapting literary properties into feature films is, is a very lucrative business if done correctly. Warner Brothers nailed it with Harry Potter, the Twilight, Hunger Games, uh, not so much with the Divergent series. But we've seen a lot of these movies come out based off of books and, and do well. And, and Disney has a wide variety of these books they can get access to. And if they bring someone who's got a good talent ability, then she could probably bring her team with her. But it's not going to be very many people. And this is just the beginning of it. We're going to hear a lot more. In fact, the article ends here by saying Disney began laying off senior staff at Fox on Thursday. Domestic distribution chief Chris Ar Ar Aronson, international distribution chief Andrew Cripps, chief content officer Tony Sella, and 20th television president Greg Midell were among those pink slipped. So when the top brass start getting just kneecapped and taken out, you know it's going to start trickling down to other people here pretty soon. This is just a sign of what's going to happen. And I don't know what their plan is yet, but people are going to be out of work. And that's, that's uh, 
sad. It is. It's sad. But this is the way business is, and this is the way business works. What are your thoughts? Leave them below.